Let's get started with our Vata Reducing, Vata Calming practice tonight. A little bit different than how we normally start. We're going to start in a seated position. Because we're trying to settle Vata, which is ether and air, what we want to do is ground, move more in a stabilizing way. So when you get into a pose, you stabilize, you stay still. We want to bring stillness into the body, stability into the body. And you do that by not creating all this movement and micro adjusting and all of that. Like I always tell everybody, I can always tell when I teach classes who is vata in out, right? The people who are vata in out are the ones that just can't stop moving around, okay? You want to go into the pose and be still, be still. Okay. Chair to not be in the camera. Mm. All right. Let's get started. Oh, excuse me. Go take your platypus over there. All right. So we're starting out seated. So my dog has this little platypus, and she woke me up at two o'clock in the morning the other night. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to have diarrhea. And it, that's not what it was. She ran into the family room and found her little platypus and then ran back to her bed where she sleeps in the closet because it's like a giant kennel. All right, hands on your knees, right heel in and then your left. And we move in a circle. And I want to just have some gentle movement. It is slow though. We want to move slow because what Vata does, is Vata is more scattered. Vata is bouncing. It kind of moves all over the place. It's very exuberant energy. And we want to tame it, settle it. And we do that by beginning to slow down. Good. And then go in the other direction. This is kind of sweet. She's going to practice with me tonight. Go in the other direction. Nice and slow. You have a little bit of movement, but it's slow. Good. And then from there, we're going to reach our arms up. And then you're going to grab the right wrist, pull to the side. And I like to look over the shoulder. So you're looking down to the left and then release and then grab the other wrist and pull. And again, you're turning your head and looking down. And then we release and go forward. So walk your hands out. Now you can use blocks here, totally fine. I'm going to actually put my little purple um, mat down so you guys could see me. Hey, Marvie. Go get your platypus. Okay. So you're reaching forward. Go there. All right, and then we come up, and as you lift up, you're gonna rotate to the right. So rotating right. Oh, that feels good. Now keep the spine lifted. You do wanna definitely take that left hand and activate it, grab the opposite knee. And what that'll do is it'll help open up between the spine and the shoulder blade, there's a trigger point in there. Help remove tension from the day, from that spot. And then we go to the other side, stay lifted and rotate. I'm wearing a wool sweater. It's been a very cold day today. It was like low teens at my house this morning. That's cold. 
So we're holding. Good, and then we release. Now, if you're wearing socks, you wanna take them off. All right, you have your right heel in, right? So where you're gonna take your outside leg and reach it out and then lift up. So reach and lift, open up that whole front of the body. And then we're gonna release down and then let that left hand reach out to the extended leg. And then the other arm comes up and breathe into that right side body. Stay open, try not to collapse. Stay open, lifted. Good, and then we release, coming out of that. Now we're gonna switch. So now pull your left heel in and then your right and then hands on your knees and move in a circle. Nice and deliberate. You wanna have a connection between your awareness and your body. So staying present, that helps calm vata, it helps. And then go in the other direction. All right, one more and lifting up and you're gonna reach your arms up, grab the left wrist this time, pull to the side, turn your head and look down. Breathe into that side body and imagine that you're releasing tension out of the ribs, out of the spleen, right? Spleen is located just below the ribs. Breathe into it. And then release and grab the wrist and go to the other side. And holding, turn your head, look down. Same thing, you're gonna breathe into your ribs. Breathe into that side body, release tension out of the liver. Liver is located underneath the lower ribs and below the ribs. The liver is a place where you can end up storing anger there, frustration, impatience, just where you feel a lot of pressure, it's tough. And then we release and go forward. Drop your head. You can use a block. And then lifting up, sitting up tall. We rotate now to the left, or sorry, to the left. Keep the chest lifting. And then go to the other side. Good, and then you're going to take your, you've got your left heel in, extend your right leg out, and then reach up and open up the whole front of the body. Breathe. And then release, drop down. And with the extended leg, you reach.
Open up, try not to collapse, stay lifted. Good, and then we release out of that. Awesome. Now we're gonna come into a crawling position. So from here, your hands are right underneath your shoulders, curl your toes under. We're gonna drop the belly, look up, and then round, going into cat, and then going into cow. And going into cat. Going into cow. One more, just like that. It's a great way to help release tension, reduce tension that gets built up in the spine, in the back. Okay, then curl your toes under and press back. Down dog. Now draw the navel in, open up your armpits, get hollow in your belly. So you're drawing the navel in, lifting it up towards the rib cage, pressing your organs to the side. Get into the pose and become still. That's what helps Vata. Remember, ether is expanding. Ether is space. It's infinite. It has no container. And air also has no container. And they move and expand. So if you're really trying to help that part of yourself, you got to be still. You got to be that container so that the vata can settle, slow down. Then the right leg is gonna step forward and you're going into a lunge. Drop your back knee. Now shift your hips forward and we're releasing the pelvis. This is also important, especially if you have a job where you're sitting. We wanna release all of that tension that gets built up in the gluteal muscles and in the pelvis. We're gonna do that tonight. And then I do wanna add rotation. Rotation helps with assimilating. So helping us to integrate and assimilate our day. So you take your hand right there on top of the thigh and then rotate. Look over the right shoulder. Drop your pelvis forward. And then we release from there and curl your toes under, pull the back leg in, straighten the right leg. Now you wanna actively move your right hip back. So what I like to do is take my right thumb, hook it into the hip there and move the hip back, square those hips, draw the right hip back, left hip forward, and then drop down. Now, if you're not as flexible, that's okay. You can use blocks or place your hands on your shin just below the knee, or you can come up on the knee, above the knee. And hold, settling the breath, staying present, feeling that breath in the body, feeling that body, be as still and stable in the pose as you can. Be like a rock, solid. Good, and then from there, stepping back into down dog. Taking a few breaths, we're really taking our time.
And then stepping the left leg forward, dropping the back knee. Marvie's hogging my mat. And again, you shift your hips forward. We want to release tension out of that pelvis. And relax, settle, be present. Notice the breath. Notice what arises in the body. Be the witness of what arises in the mind. And then rotate to the side. You're turning. Keep the left hand on the thigh and look over the left shoulder. What does that rotation do? Well, again, it helps us integrate and assimilate. Rotation squeeze the torso in the abdomen. It rotates the abdomen. And what that does is it's like an internal massage for the organs. As a result, not only does it help bring in new blood, new circulation, it helps digestion. It's like an internal massage so that contributes to digestion, assimilation, integration, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And then we release from there. Pull your back leg in, drop your back heel, straighten the front leg. And again, you're gonna take that left thumb, hook it into the hip, right where the leg comes in. Hook it in and move that left hip back, right hip forward, square those hips, and then release down. You could stay lifted with the hands above the knee, or you can go below the knee on the shin. Eventually you can go with blocks or to the ground. I have a little injury on this side, so I have to be careful. Oh, that's easier. Marvie's my block. Good. And then from there, we're going to step back, back into down dog. And again, we hold. Now dropping down onto your knees, you're gonna sit back. We are gonna do a rotation. So you can use a block. I don't have a block right next to me, but I'll show you a modification. You're gonna come up like you're doing Ustrasana camel pose. Right hand is gonna come up and it can go either to the sacrum, fingertips down, and then the other arm reaches up, or you can go to the hamstring or see if you can go to your heel and look over the right shoulder. You're getting a little too comfortable there, Marvie. Now, we release out of that, release out of that, and then left hand goes to the ground. So you're coming down, left hand goes to the ground, and then I want you to open up. So take your left foot, move it off the mat, open, Vashistasana variation. So side plank and then reach that upper arm over the ear. Swing the arm around and step back into down dog. Steady. So even with Vata, you know, Vata is like a butterfly. I always try to tell people, when you're dealing with a person that has more vata, you, we, we know, we, talk, we use these terms in the West and we don't even realize that what we're doing is talking about the elements. 
when we talk about somebody who is more flighty, more spaced out, scattered, they, they have a hard time, you know, finishing things. Th those are our Vata friends. They're more sensitive. They're more finical, finicky. They're just fickle, right? They're picky. And they're that way because they don't have a lot. Like they're not thick skinned. They're thin skinned. All right. Then we release down and come back up like you're going into Ustrasanas. Toes stay curled under, left arm comes up and fingertips go down at the sacrum and you lift or you can go to the hamstring or you can go to the heel and lift. So we wanna be kind to our Vata friends because they change their minds very easily. It's because they're not very stable. They are literally physically not as stable. They tend to have more issues. And we need to be gentle and kind with them. They need nurturing, but they need to know that about themselves and not overdo it for themselves because they get overwhelmed. Okay, then the right hand comes down Turn the right foot out, off the mat, extend the left leg, and reach. That upper arm then goes alongside the ear. And swing the arm around. And again, we go back into down dog. And now stepping forward, right leg into a high lunge. So the back leg stays lifted. Nice and stable. Walk the foot out a little bit. So you have some stability. Keep your back leg lifted. And then we are going to rotate and reach. Rotate and reach. Keep the back leg lifted. We're moving a little slower. That helps to settle the Vata energy. All right. And then releasing the right arm. And we're going to take the right arm either onto the thigh, drop your back heel, and then open up. Take that upper arm alongside the ear, or you can go deeper into this pose by dropping the hand to the big toe side of the foot. And you can use a block, of course. Parshva Konasana. Strong and steady. Be stable. Get into the pose. Hold it. No micro adjusting. Solid. Strong. Notice your breath. Keeping your eyes even focused on a single point. That will help Vata too. A lot of times when you have a lot of Vata going on, you'll notice that your eyes kind of shift around all over the place. We want to keep the eyes focused on a single point. So find a single point, a dristi, and keep your eyes gazing gently, not intensely, but gently on that single point. And then reach around and step back, down dog. And again, we hold. Now the left leg steps forward. And again, we're going into a high lunge. Super strong. Not dropping the back knee, stay lifted. And walk the foot out just a little bit to the left so you have a wider base. That will help you feel more stable. Strong. Right hand is down and then we're rotating. Stack the left shoulder on top of the right. Keep the back leg strong.
And then that upper arm swings around. You're either gonna take it right there onto the thigh, drop your back heel, reach the right arm up, take it alongside the ear, or you can drop a little deeper into the pose by bringing the hand down to the ground or on a block, big toe side of the foot. And then releasing. And again, stepping back, down dog. Hold. Right leg now steps forward, warrior one. Drop your back heel and come up. Warrior one, reach. Again, right hip moves back, left hip forward. Open nice and strong, navels in, tailbones down. Super simple practice tonight, but that's what Vata needs because Vata's mind scatters all over the place and gets complicated too much. So we simplify things. We don't want to keep adding. Doesn't need to be super creative. Not when you're dealing with Vata. You want it simple, strong, steady, calming. Then we're going to interlace our fingers behind us, open up the chest. And this is a way of also helping to release tension out of the upper back, dropping forward. Letting the torso rest on the thigh, relaxing your head, arms up. Or you go to the inside of the knee. So you can drop the shoulder on the inside, relax your head and lift. And hold it there. And try to be as relaxed as you can with your head. And keep lifting those arms up. And that helps release tension out of the back and the shoulders. And we get a lot of tension that builds up there, you guys. And then we're going to release the arms and rotate to the left. Turn your feet parallel or toes slightly turn in like pigeon toed. And then releasing down into a fold. Two fingers are going to wrap around the big toe, connect to your thumb and drop down. Release your head. Settle the breath. Feel that body and try to soften, but stay strong, stable, but relaxed. Okay, then lifting up, we're going to rotate. Back towards the right foot, step back, down dog. Taking a few breaths, steady. Then the left leg steps forward, coming up. Reach, warrior one. Draw the left hip back, open up. Tailbone down, navel in. Nice. All right, and then you interlace your fingers behind you, drop. So remember you're dropping 
either landing there on the thigh, let your head relax, or going to the inside and you're lifting your arms up. Relax your head. And then we release our arms. We're gonna turn to the right. Again, feet are parallel or slightly pigeon-toed, okay? And then you're gonna drop down to the right side. Bend that knee. Your hands then shift over towards that right foot and drop. So one leg is extended, the other leg is bent. And then see if you can lift your toes on the extended leg. And then coming up and go to the other side. Hands move over to the left foot. Drop down, extended leg is your right leg. Now you're going to drop as low as you can and then lift your toes. If you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Keep your toes down. doesn't matter. This is your practice. And then release. Good. And then we turn towards that left foot and step back, down dog. All right, because I want to help release tension out of the glutes and the pelvis, we're gonna take the right leg forward and then walk that foot over into pigeon. And I know I do a pigeon a lot or double pigeon, but it's because it's an important pose. It helps to open up the glutes. So throw a blanket underneath you on the right glute underneath the right butt. And then you wanna drop the left hip down. Now we're trying to release stuff that gets bunched up here in the glutes and the rotators. This helps with sciatica. And if you sit a lot in your job, you gotta do pigeon or some form of release for the pelvis. Keep dropping the left hip down and then dropping down. And see if you can go a little bit lower, maybe pulling the blanket out. Maybe even bringing your right heel up a little bit so that it lines up with the right knee. Drop your left hip. And then releasing out of that and stepping back. And the other leg comes forward into a lunge and you walk the foot over. And again, using a blanket underneath the left glute, drop down. Now, I know a lot of people teach a uh, pigeon with the heel into the groin, whatever, that's a variation, but that is true pigeon. Your foot is up higher and eventually lines up with the knee. So start out lifted, try to drop the right hip down, 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 down. And then see if you can pull the blanket out, dropping the left hip down. 
Maybe bringing that right heel or left heel up a little further, line up with the knee. Maybe even taking that extended leg back further and then dropping down. I guess we're gonna share the mat tonight. She's so loving, aren't you? Try to relax, soften. You get into the pose and then you hold it. Good, and then slowly, slowly, we're gonna swing that back leg around. I'm gonna turn and face forward. That back leg swings around and then we just do a nice twist. So you get both sit bones down. I put my blanket underneath my sit bones and then rotate to one side. So you have, I have my right leg over. It looks like my left leg on the ca camera, but it's my right. And then I'm using my left arm to look over the right shoulder and then switch. Switch sides, same thing. And then extending both legs straight out and dropping down into a forward fold, releasing. Drop your head, relax your head. Okay, and then we're gonna come out of that using our bolster and the bolster is gonna go long ways like this. And you're gonna turn, have about an inch or two between your back and the bolster and lay back. And then you could put a blanket underneath your knees, get a little support there and open up your arms to the side. So just a gentle opening for the chest tonight. And this is our first restorative posture. Gently let the shoulders open. So we wanna open up the shoulder girdle, gently open the chest, this is a posture that helps us with having a, a way of holding ourselves that is more lifted. So oftentimes people will start rounding their shoulders and the chest starts to collapse. And this is a gentle way of opening up the chest and encouraging the shoulder blades to move back the chest to open, the shoulders to open. Good, and then our, we're slowly gonna come out of that. Now our next pose, you need to use a wall or a chair or a couch or a bed or something. You take a blanket or a bolster to the wall, and then I'm going to take my blanket and open it up so that it's not cold. But you do want to use something, and then the, the pelvis goes on top of your bolster, and you let it, you just kind of push into the wall, pull it right underneath your pelvis. Legs lift and release. 
So this is a supported shoulder stand. Now you preferably want the legs to be relaxed. So if you can have them actually on a chair or a couch, it's even better, right? We're going to Baddha Konasana. So what, it, what happens is when you can relax the legs. So if you're up against the wall and you're having to support your legs, it's, it's not as ideal. I've kind of had to hook my heels here. So it's a little bit more relaxed, but what this does is it starts to help relax the psoas. And the psoas is a large muscle that goes from the ribs, the back, mid back, all the way down. It's part of our ab abdominal area, all the way down through the pelvis and connects to the femur bone. That muscle is a muscle that is directly connected to the nervous system through that 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. And you'll hear a lot about the vagal, the vagal tone or the vagal nerve and how important it is that we settle it and calm it and tone it so that we feel relaxed and we feel at ease. Well, this is a posture that helps to calm down the vagal nerve because if you're ever feeling lots of like tension, you're just having tension in your body as a whole, it means that probably your psoas is contracted and the nervous system is overactivated. And so what we want to do is start to use practices that help us to settle all of that, calm down the vagus nerve, the nervous system, help do postures that will relax those muscles that are getting overactivated because the nervous system is overactivated. So relax and settle. Coming out of that, slowly coming off the wall, off the chair, off the couch, wherever you are. And we're going to go back to the mat. Excuse me, Marty. Laying down, doing a little bridge. So lifting up into bridge, then releasing down, draw your knees in. Open up your arms to the side, drop your legs to the right side, look to the left, release. And then drop your legs to the left side, turning your head to the right and release. All right, and then setting yourself up for Shavasana, using your bolster underneath your knees. Again, it's another way of helping to relax the psoas, right? It also helps the back. So if you have tension in your back, it's a great way of releasing tension in your back. So you take that bolster underneath your knees and definitely cover yourself up. Put your socks back on. Yeah, my little booties. It's darn cold. 
And then laying down in Shavasana, corpse pose, palms up in a receiving position. Make sure you're warm. So put your sweatshirt back on and put a blanket over you and relax. Again, we move into stillness. Vata really needs, so does Pitta as well, but Vata really needs Shavasana. I'm giving a little bit longer Shavasana to yourself when you're feeling like you have a little too much Vata going on is a really great way of settling the body. So just relax and rest, be still. Settle the breath, slow down the body, be present. Let the mind feel that whole body, the connection to the floor, your connection to your breath. And relax. So if you want to, you can take a longer Shavasana and go as long as you would like. Otherwise, roll to your right side. Rest there. And then bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Bringing your hands together, connecting your thumbs to your heart. Close your eyes, be still. Have the intention of softening the whole body. Feel your bones, your muscles, your skin. Everything's softening. And be still in that. Be gentle in it. Be kind to yourself. When you are feeling overwhelmed and scattered, it's when we really need to be kind to ourselves. So we may not be able to expect others to be kind to us, but we can be kind to ourselves. Be gentle. Give yourself more rest, more time to be still. And may you have a wonderful evening. Namaste. Definitely a peaceful night of sleep. All right. Good job. I have to show you guys her platypus. Did you see it? It's her platypus. It's her baby.